uh, Anna from uh, OP here. Hello, everyone. She is. Hi, Anna. Welcome. So you're going to be talking to us today about um, payments transformation and API solutions for corporate banking. Yes. Very Thank good. You, well, Alan. you have your slides. I'll leave you to it. Yeah. Uh, so hello, everyone. Um, my name is Anna. I, I come from the OP Financial Group, um, and I, where I work in the OP service unit focused on corporate payment services and in a team creating the API solutions for for, for that area. And uh, today I'm going to share you with some uh, background for OP's corporate banking API development and present you our new API products together with some use cases. And uh, guessing you all are eager to hear more, I'll go to the topic. Um, so as consumers, we have long been used to things being real time. For a decade already, we have been sending instant messages, sharing our real time uh, life in real time in social media, making purchases online at any time of day. Uh, this kind of consumer behavior has brought new requirements and expectations for how money is being transferred, and in other words, how we as banks operate. But to be honest, we have been lagging behind a bit. Well, for some years already, uh, mobile payment solutions such as mobile pay and Bebo here in Finland, they have become part of our everyday lives. And with, with them, we as demanding consumers have already gotten the experience of lots of payments, even though the actual funds have not been transferred in real time between bank accounts. Recently, though, the banking world has, has taken some steps in, in the payments area to start actually supporting real-time uh, economy for real. Um, in the end of 2017, SEPA Instant Credit Transfer a Service was published uh, to launch the development of standardized real-time credit transfers Europe-wide. And since then, over 2,000 banks have already joined the service, either um, as a receiving party at minimum or also as a sending party. And 56% uh, of European service providers currently have, uh, have joined by now. Uh, however, the, the estimated share of these instant payments in total credit transfer volumes is currently uh, a bit over 6%, so there is still a long way to go. Um, with these instant payments, uh, we are able to transfer funds between one bank account to another in 10 seconds from actually from one uh, the payer's account to the recipient's account. And, and the transactions are processed around, uh, with this speed in seconds around the clock every day of the year, also during holidays. And this is something completely new in the banking world. OP uh, joined the service as a, as a receiving party in spring 2019 and as a sending party later same year. Um, these SEPA instant payments, they are only in euros, but there are also initiatives that aim at providing faster and more transparent international currency payments. So payments are going faster, but we still have some blockers. Uh, despite these new efforts towards real-time payments, today's corporate processes and banking solutions have, have not really been ready for pa faster payment processing. And I will next give you a, a look on the background for this. Um, in Finland, the majority of corporate payment transactions today in large and smaller companies are computerized using a uh, web service interface. And the first version of this computerized uh, corporate to bank connection was established actually already in the 1980s. And even though this current version of the web service interface was designed and standardized uh, in the 2000s, the basic logic of transferring batch files hasn't really changed. So, so the everyday life of corporate uh, financial management is actually sending maybe one batch of payments to the bank per day and then getting one account statement the next morning. So obviously you can understand this is not very real time and because the payment transactions used to be settled uh, in batches also between banks this 
processing logic of, of the web service interface uh, hasn't really been challenged until now. So then we get to APIs. Uh, in order to enable our corporate customers to process their payments and account data to really real time, we needed to rethink our corporate banking solutions and interfaces. And, and that's where APIs come into the picture. But when discussing about banks and APIs, the second payment service directive, PSD2, and banks opening their services to, for fintech use is, is what usually comes to mind to the wide audience. However, these are not the APIs that our customer, corporate customers can use for their own real-time banking needs for the, uh, for the reasons mentioned here on this slide. Uh, the PSD2 APIs, uh, as presented already in some presentations, they, they can only be uh, used by registered and licensed third-party providers. They, they rely on manual customer authentication and authorization. So the, the actual account customer of the bank, they have to manually type in, for example, their online bank credentials to be able to authenticate themselves and authorize the, the third-party provider to, to collect their account data, for example. Also, the authorizations given, given in these services are, are limited in the validity and, and also that the, for all these reasons, the functionalities and, and use cases for these APIs are fairly limited. So we came up with another set of APIs that are made for corporate use. Uh, OP corporate banking APIs, they are available for, uh, for own use to any corporate customer with an account at OP. Uh, no need to be a licensed service provider, so uh, only to have an account at OP. Um, these corporate banking APIs are provided with a secure machine-to-machine -machine customer authentication, so there's no manual intervention needed and the whole uh, payment traffic can be automated. Um, these APIs, they are flexible to use and, and they enable further development for the customer. But, but since, uh, since the technical implementation of APIs is fairly easy, it's also simpler for us as a bank provide completely new kinds of services. And uh, while uh, launching new kinds of products, we also wanted to design a new pricing model for our APIs. Uh, to make pricing of banking services more understandable and more supportive of active use compared to the tra traditional corporate banking service fees, which usually have been transaction, uh, paper transaction type of pricing. Um, so what kind of APIs do we have? Uh, this OP corporate banking API is a, APIs, are, they are a growing product family. And currently we have these four APIs in production available for all our corporate customers. Um, the first two APIs we published were uh, OP Corporate Account Data API and OP Corporate Payment API. And these APIs are uh, sort of the simple set of APIs you need to be able to um, make transactions and uh, fetch account data real time. In addition to these, we came up with completely new kinds of services that haven't been provided in any other, chan uh, any other channel here at OP. Uh, first of them is OP Corporate Transaction Filter API, which is also an API for uh, retrieving account data. But in this API, the customer is able to provide more parameters uh, to specify the account transaction query. For example, they can give the an amount or uh, an amount range, uh, the name of the payer or other specifying information, which then narrows down the, the result that we give in the API call. Then uh, this fourth API, OP Corporate Refund API is, is something uh, that is also a completely new service, but uh, has been created based on a big need from our, from our real customers. So uh, to open this up, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit, I will share, um, uh, for example, today, uh, many corporate customers in Finland that have a large consumer base, they receive a lot of transactions that are, um, that are somehow faulty or incorrect. So 
uh, consumers might be paying completely uh, wrong invoices to the wrong company um, or they might be paying their invoices on behalf of somebody else when the so then the debtor name is actually different than what says on the invoice um, or they are not uh, paying with the reference number so so all these reasons they they make it impossible for the receiving company to be able to uh, match the incoming transactions to accounts receivable uh, and in Finland when transactions are being uh, sent uh, the account number of the payer is not uh, transferred to the recipient so so the corporate customers currently they haven't been able to to send uh, send back those payments because they don't know the account number. So with this with this AI, they are able to automate um, the returns and refunds back to the original debtor uh, by just typing in the or giving in the API called the original um, payment information. Uh, and with that information, we fetch the debtor account number and send the funds back to the original debtor. Then when we launched our first corporate API products, we wanted also the customer to be able to take the APIs into use self, fully self-service. So that's why we also came up with this OP API admin website where our customers can both create the service agreement needed for this API use and exchange uh, technical uh, certificates that are required. And all this can be done self-service in minutes i would promise and uh this is quite a big improvement compared to the traditional corporate banking processes where paper documents are being carried to the bank or the bank clerk needs to activate services for the customer um so here corporate customer can do everything self-service and fully digital and this website can be used by uh, a company representative who has signatory rights in the company and th those rights have been registered in the Finnish trade register. Uh, another important website related to our APIs is OP Developer. Um, this is the home of OP's APIs for developers. So, so all the interface documentation for these corporate banking APIs, but also other OP's APIs, such as the PSD2 APIs, is provided, provided here. And, and why this also is an improvement from the earlier times for corporate customers is that the documentation here is in quite much simpler compared to the, for example, the web services interface documentation, which used to be many tens of pages long PDF documents with the XML structures and fields and so on. And here, even, even if you aren't a developer or a technical person of sorts, if you read this, you you can get the idea of what are the, the data that you need to provide to be able to send a payment or what do you need to provide to get the account data. And also what, what kind of data will you be uh, get, getting in, in return. And in our documentation, uh, we also are giving instructions on how our APS can be tested in Sandbox for free. Um, then I could uh, give you an example of how our corporate banking APS can actually be used uh, in practice. Um, I will present to you a use case for one of our products, and there would be many more to share as well, but uh, to save time for other speakers. And I, I encourage you to check out our website, and uh, which I will give you an exact link to and in the chat later on, uh, or contact me if you're interested in hearing more use cases. So. This case that I will present has come from several uh, several of our corporate customers in different kinds of forms. Uh, and it is having account data in different kinds of customer service situations. So imagine, for example, a case where uh, service activation or product shipping requires a successful payment transaction from the customer. And uh, here I want to specify, for example, a case where where the customer hasn't paid their their transaction early enough for it to catch the automated processes and so on but instead the customer is for example calling uh, customer service to to inquire why is my service not activated 
Some examples I could give you are, for example, electricity providers, telecom companies, where if you haven't paid your bills for a certain amount of time, your services will be cut off. So, so in this case as before, the customer service agent, they would have to contact the financial department to be actually able to confirm that the customer transaction has been received. But what if the financial department can't be reached? For example, during weekends, um, usually the customer service agent or the company, they would have to take a risk if they open services or for example, ship out products before they have received a transaction. So that's why the, our customers with uh, with this kind of problems, they, they would like to have a way to bring uh, real-time account transaction data directly to the customer uh, interface where, where they where they need that information. And with our corporate transaction filter, this would actually be possible. So usually the customer service or a salesperson or in the logistics, there is a, is a system where they have customer data or the, um, the orders or uh, that sort of thing. They could uh, integrate our corporate transaction filter API to that system so that the customer service agent or, or salesperson, they could uh, type in the information of the customer and check if, if uh, with that information, we, the company has actually received a transaction of a right kind. And uh, and then in that case, the service agent actually gets the confirmation of, of the transaction immediately and they can activate the service. And and no longer are, are these uh, these customer service agent uh, agents dependent on the financial department. So to sum up, um, Real-time payments are now here to stay and, and consumers are already expecting um, real-time uh, service from businesses. Um, so, but, but the old ways of corporate banking didn't really support the, this real-time payment processing for corporate customers. But now with our APIs, they are the new core to automated banking and payment traffic. And, and because it, the implementation is simple, uh, it's fast to take take you into use and also fle flexible to use in different kinds of use cases. And the corporate customers can actually customize uh, the API use. And uh, for example, in this uh, previous case that I presented, uh, the customer service agent in the user interface, they could either see all the information of the uh, that they get from the API or the customer can uh, customize the, their UI so that it actually shows, for example, this traffic-like system, uh, for example, that uh, if it's red, the customer hasn't paid the, paid the transaction, and if it's green, everything is okay. Uh, so it, the APIs are, are good for customized use cases. And also, by using these new instant payments and real-time account data from the bank, businesses are able to provide better service experience for their customers. So if you want to get some more information, uh, you can read more about our corporate banking APIs and their benefits on op.fi. I can uh, share the link to the chat after uh, my presentation. And also, uh, if you're more interested in the actual content of the APIs, you can check the uh, technical interface documentation uh, on OP Developer. And if you register to OP Developer and subscribe to the new newsletter, you will be among the first to hear about our new new launches. So, thank you. That was all I had today. And here's my email address as well, uh, if you want to contact and discuss more more about our APIs. Thank Perfect. You. Thank you very much, Anna. That was uh, that was really interesting. It's great to see that you know you have so many uh, you know API products out there already. I, I took a quick look over at uh, OP Developer, and I can see there's there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, yeah. I have good news. We have a couple of questions, right? So let, let's get okay. straight into those. So from uh, Yuho, um, he says, "Okay, cool stuff. Uh, do you see the corporate APIs becoming standardized at least in Finland? And do you push this to other banks?" This is what we hear from a lot of our corporate customers, and and uh, uh, of course, uh, currently when 
many of the businesses in Finland actually have accounts in all many of the biggest banks, they would wish that the APIs would be standardized to all of those banks. But at least currently, uh, the other banks in Finland are not as far with API development as we are at OP. So, so uh, and also because of the um, competition laws in Finland, we are not uh, able to too much discuss this kind of development with our competitors. But uh, but of course, I think uh, in the market, everybody is following each other and seeing uh, what to what to provide. And of course, the the corporate customers themselves can also put pressure on their other banks if they want to have those uh, those APIs from those banks as well. But uh, but also if if um, if these corporate customers want to have their these uh, great API services, then they can start focusing some some of their services to those banks where they get the best best APIs. All right, good answer. Um, we have another question from Mr. Fred Hein. Uh, he says, is this API supported by Finnish banks only, or is there a list of banks uh, that supports this API? So um, Finnish yeah, banks these, only or not? Yeah, these APIs that I presented, these are only uh, APIs in OP Bank. So. So there are these uh, different kinds of sort of premium or commercial APIs also in other banks in other countries. But, uh, but uh, for example, I know at least some banks in, in uh, Germany have similar kind of uh, logic in these APIs. But uh, I think we are also quite uh, far ahead in, in Finland as, as well with this whole corporate banking interfaces. Alrighty, um, we've got lots of questions for you. It's really good. Um, Frode asks, what's the role of the accounting system providers? Will they sit between the corporate customer and the bank, particularly in the SME market? Uh, obviously, yes, that, that is a big group of sort of, or a target group or stakeholder group for us. And, and uh, we have been uh, in contact with many software providers who are providing diff different kinds of financial administration services to SME market. And uh, yes, in a way, they probably will in some cases be, be in the middle. Um, and uh, they are also expecting a lot from our APIs and have been very interested. All righty. Um, there's another question. I don't know if you can answer this or not, but he says, um, can you share the starting prices if I want to access my account over your corporate APIs? Uh, I don't have our pricing right here right now, but uh, uh, we have for, for example, the account data API, I can uh, share that we have different kind of pricing packages uh, depending on how often you want to retrieve that account data. So if you only want to retrieve it a couple of times a day, I think it was as little as maybe uh, 10 or 15 euros per month. So, so you can start from really little and then if you want to um, get more data or more often and if you have multiple accounts, then then it goes, uh, I think, up to 100 euros per month or 200 euros per month. Okay, cool. So a couple of questions from my side then. Um, so you've identified your, your target market as being corporate customers, right? Yeah. How how are you communicating with them? Because I can see via the the OP developers that you know that's a developer who might be hired by a corporate uh, customer, like corporation. They hire a developer because they've seen the value. How are you communicating then to the uh, to the corporate customers that this is something that you'd want to do? And um, yeah, uh, we are in uh, close contact with our customers, and uh, even though I'm from the actually the development uh, department. We are um, doing work together with OP Corporate Bank, where we actually meet our corporate customers. We present our APIs, and and if they ask how, how can they get into uh, start using our APIs, we give advice and and nudge them forward. So so okay. in in OP at least the the account managers are in a great role of communicating new products to okay. corporate customers. Okay, so you push it through your existing sales channels there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I see, also because we I... do different kinds of marketing actions. Okay, that's really cool. I mean, I could see that you know you're showing the API contract, and uh, you know I I would probably love to see that, but you know as a 
if I think of like, I don't know, my father-in-law or someone like that, if you show that to him, uh, he, he wouldn't have a clue, right? So, um, well, maybe he would, he's not that bad. Um, <laughs> but okay, yeah, so um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. I, I, I liked your presentation. Thank you very, very much for, for attending today. Thank you. And, uh, Thank and, you. and we shall move on. Thanks, goodbye.